Now that I have your attention, on behalf of the Red Hook Rotary Foundation and the Rotary Club of Red Hook, I'd like to welcome everyone here tonight to honor Claudine and Christopher Close. And now that I have everybody settled down and seated, um, unfortunately I'm going to ask you to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if you please remain standing with the Rotarians, um, part of opening our meeting, we always recite our, our four-way tests, so I ask the Rotarians to recite with me. Of all the things we think, say, or do, is the truth, is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And if I could just ask uh, Father Fred, or Michael, you're gonna do, Michael's doing it. Give us our invocation. Fred made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Dear God, we're reminded in all our faith traditions that you love to eat with people you love. And maybe even party. So it's good to have excuses anyway. Let's make an excuse of the Rotary and the Rotary Foundation. You like it. It does good things. And the young people that we were involved with through Rotary. And water box, which you lit up. And most especially, Claudine and Christopher Close. Amen. Thank you. Okay, you may be seated. And before we start dinner, um, we have with us tonight State Senator Sue Serino, who has a, another engagement after this. So um, she would like to come up first and make her presentation. Good evening, everyone. You know, I just became a member of the Hyde Park Rotary. I had wanted to do that for years, and I've always admired what the Rotaries do. You're it's all about community, and I can't thank you enough, each and every one of you, for everything that you do. And for Claudine and Christopher, I have a proclamation for you. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to read um, one of the uh, paragraphs. So uh, it says, this proclamation, whereas rare indeed is the occurrence of such leadership, intellect, and commitment is that demonstrated by Christopher and Claudine Close in their dedication to others. Now therefore be it resolved that this legislative office pause in its deliberations to honor Christopher and Claudine Close upon the occasion of their designation as citizens of the year by the Red Hook Rotary Foundation. So th thank you for all you do for and have done. Okay, thank you, Senator. Thank you. So, um, now we will uh, move on with the program. And one other thing I seem to do every year is I, I get up here and I start talking and I forget to introduce who I am. But um, I'm here every year, so I think maybe some people recognize me from year to year. But uh, my name is Carl Dowden. I'm the chairperson of the Red Hook Rotary Foundation. And thank you. And now we will um, get on with the other part of the program. We're going to have, um, we have a, a few proclamations here in addition to uh, the one that uh, Senator Serino made to you. Um, I have a, a letter from uh, Senator Chuck Schumer. Um, and we have a proclamation from um, Assemblyman Kevin Cahill, and also from um, 
Marcus Molinero, our county executive. So I'd like to present those to you at this time. Okay. And at, at this time, continuing with our proclamations, and now I'd like to introduce our town supervisor, Robert McKeon. Well, I was going to roast the closest, but I won't tonight on advice of counsel. <laughs> Somebody else is taking that job this evening, so that's really great. Well, I can't tell you how excited I was to hear the news that Chris and Claudine Close were chosen for this award. In fact, a few weeks ago, I asked one of the Rotary members what was the outcome of the ballots. And I don't think they realized what they were saying when they said it, but they said it was very close. <laughs> don't blame me, they're Rotary members. Well, look, this is very impressive when you look at uh, their bio. I mean, take Chris, for example. Chris worked for 40 years in communications, what most of us refer to as blah, 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 blah. <laughs> he wrote for President Ford, put two feet forward, President Ford. <laughs> Yeah, that didn't go very well, did it? <laughs> Claudine. Geez, you only moved here 10 years ago. Af after working for a little museum that nobody's ever heard of. <laughs> the Smithsonian. <laughs> so I think tonight we celebrate all of the great work that the two of you have done merging two historic society groups, providing weekly public access to records, and of course, great events, Preservation Expo, Hard Scrabble Day, Open House, Soup, and the famous Chili Nights. But really, when is an evening with a bunch of history buffs not a Chili Night? I told you I wasn't going to roast them. This was the alternative. <laughs> now, I will tell you that I sat on the historic Red Hook board with both of them before becoming town supervisor, and, and that was something, really something. But because I have the luck of the black Irish, when I left, I somehow managed to join the only town board in America whose members are actually older than the Historic Society board members. Where, where are they? Would you wave to your fans, please? Where are they? Would you wave? There they are waving. Would you give them a round of applause for all that they do? The Red Hook Town Board. I refer to them fondly as board members one, two, three, and four. Okay. So, obviously you know that when I'm not trying my best to help with smart government, I'm fully embracing stupid humor. But I do want to take a moment to tell you what I really think about my friends Chris and Claudine Close at a time when their lives were impacted by Chris's health issues, when they were hit with such a scare about their son, they were not only there for their family, they were there for our family, making sure that we had what we needed to move our community forward. Chris brings a passion one that often includes an afternoon thunderstorm, admittedly, that reminds us that we should never take for granted what we have here.
Claudine. Your intelligence and your amazing competency is only matched by your elegance and the way you make everyone want to be around you. These are incredible people in the audience tonight, Chris and Claudine, who in their own right have done so much for our community. They are here to recognize you, together with all the folks who help out in so many ways for this community, the prospects for historic Red Hook and future Red Hook have never been better. Thank you for coming home. Thank you, Robert. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Mayor Ed Blundell up from the village of Red Hook. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'd like to continue the tone that Robert set, but um, I know Chris and Claudine a little bit differently from different formats and so forth, but first I'd like to see a show of hands. Um, we meet with Chris every other week and Claudine not so much. I see her infrequently, so I know more about Chris to be honest with you. But uh, who's had the good fortune to be in meetings with Chris over the past number of years? Maybe you can raise your hand so I can see what we're dealing with. Oh, a lot of people. I know he prides himself and he really is a great communicator and the 40 year term in Washington, I don't know how President Ford figured into it all, that might not be a high point of his career, but um, the rest seems like uh, he really knows the value of the spoken word and the English language. Um, at meetings sometimes he's such a communicator that we have to sometimes tell him, okay Chris, that's enough communicating today. It's like <laughs> But uh, he respects that, and it's, it's one of his strengths. He, he gets us on a, the straight and narrow, and uh, one of his big things is always, I would use the word, he looks for the succinct message. He says at different meetings, what are you trying to convey? What, what's your message? And it makes people think, and in the course of it, I was looking if you want to take out your uh, program guide here. I can remember Robert alluded to something, there were two historic societies, and now there's one common name, and. One, I've read some history of the American Revolution where Egbert Benson is a known name to folks, but the old society name was the Egbert Benson Historical Society, which would make you probably not want to go to one of those meetings anyway. I mean, who, who was Egbert Benson, at least from a casual observer? But Chris, in his succinctness, if that's the word, Chris, um, made it historic Red Hook, which conveys the message, and it really does the job. And we know right now in the village they've had a donation from a sister property, and they're working on an amazing project to make a composite, like a green, but with two buildings that are the main parts of it, and then we'll have a common area in the middle, so they're working right now with planners and so forth in the village, which is amazing stuff, and it'll be a really, it's awesome as it is, but as it goes forward, it'll be even, even nicer. To, to me, it's going to be something like the Senate House concept in Kingston, New York, something where there's a little more going on around it, which is good. On another side, Chris, like we said, he's a big language guy. Um, and one thing that made me more proud of him and more admiring of him was, I never really knew it, but he did a little show on Panda where he was in the Peace Corps back in the late 60s, I guess it was, Chris. And uh, a good buddy of mine from college is in Peace Corps. I know the uh, Dwyer McNulty's out here have a child in the Peace Corps too. And I think it was one of America's greatest experiments. It was really an amazing way. It was a product of the 60s that brought America values and certain things to the world. And when I heard Chris did that, it made sense to me. And one thing, I know um, we all speak English here, and looking around, most of it's our primary language, but I wanted to tease him a little bit. Um, he has the ability to speak one of the most, in the top 10 languages by speakers. There's about 100 million of these speakers in the world. And Chris can speak Punjabi. And I really thought that sometime tonight, he should give us a little Punjabi. I don't know if Chris, if you, <laughs> if, if you want to come up, it's pretty amazing to hear a white-haired Anglo guy speak Punjabi. But it's, <laughs> but uh, I don't know when he wants to do that for us, but I thought that'd be good. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I, I can hear things, but when, when you get the mic. But, <laughs> but with all that said, um, when they returned to Red Hook, we felt the impact almost immediately. They, they came out of, we knew the close family and the close name, but uh, when they both came out, uh, Chris, 
like I said, he crossed my path more often. But I would reflect and repeat what Robert McKeon said, that with Claudine, when she's at a meeting, you get that feeling there's a quietness to her, but a strong intellect too. And you can see behind the scenes at Historic Red Hook and the different things that have gone on, they work together. And uh, Chris, for whatever reason, is much more outgoing and you know he's there in the room, whereas Claudine is quietly there in the room, but getting things done. So we thank both of them and the work you've done has helped the village greatly. We have our normal proclamation, which we wrote to share, save a little paper. We did one for both of you, so, uh, but, the, we'll, <laughs> but I'd, like to, I'd like to deliver that to both of you, and thanks for being in Red Hook and back again. Thank you. And now I'd like to invite uh, Joel Griffiths, the mayor of Tivoli, and Emily Major. Good evening, everyone. Tivoli's very happy to be here. Thank you, Red Hook Rotary, and congratulations to the honorees. I will now turn the mic over to the greatest deputy mayor in the village of Tivoli and our town historian, Emily Major. first time I was going to speak in front of a big group of people, I was super nervous, more nervous than now. And so I asked Chris, given his background in communication, for advice. And he was very serious. And he said something that, he said so seriously and so comfortably that I attribute it to him, but in fact it was Aristotle. Um, <laughs> he said, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them what you're telling them, and then tell them what you've told them. <laughs> But I'm going to ignore that for now. <laughs> and instead, I'm going to talk about history, because history is important. Because it is the story of a place, and sometimes the only thing that we might have in common is that we're sharing a place. This place, Red Hook. And history is, it's a lot of things. It's funny old clothes and dusty books and faded daguerreotypes. But it's also narrative. It's the stories that those things can tell us about ourselves about the community that we've found ourselves in by chance or by choice. And it's the stories, it's the history, and it's our collective story that helps to inform our decisions as we move forward. With their combined commitments to the Economic Development Council, Planning Board, and Historic Red Hook, Chris and Claudine are clearly devoted to keeping an eye to the past in order to inform the future. Each uses their specific talents to encourage and foster community development and personal engagement. Chris with his booming voice, raised eyebrow, and jesting relationship with language. And Claudine with her soft charm, crinkly-eyed smile, boundless energy, and her ability to make stuff happen. <laughs> Uh, they are responsible and enthusiastic stewards of the agricultural heritage of Red Hook, including the Close Family Farmstead, Echo Valley Farm, and also for, to, also for the cultural heritage of the town, embodied in the mission of Historic Red Hook, which is to engage the community in conversations about Red Hook's unfolding story by collecting, preserving, and promoting Red Hook's history. I'm also here in my uh, official capacity as um, president of the Close Family fan club. I can't tell you how much I adore these people. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like one of the really big reasons we're celebrating Chris and Claudine tonight is because they care so deeply about the once and future Red Hook. Now I'll turn it over to you. There's nothing like delegating to a very competent person. Thank you, Emily. And now I will read our proclamation. The village of Tivoli is happy to celebrate Red Hook Rotary's 2018 Citizens of the Year, Claudine and Chris Close. Thank you for leading Historic Red Hook into such a collaborative relationship with the village on events such as the annual Winterfest productions and community potluck suppers. Your enthusiasm, good humor, and knack for connecting with people, with their history, with each other, with the town, is inspiring. Tivolians recognize and appreciate your continuing commitment to building and strengthening community in the villages and in the town of Red Hook.
Well, thank you. Uh, this time I'd uh, like to have uh, every member of the Red Hook Rotary Club who's with us tonight, please stand so everybody can see who we are. One of the, the many programs that the uh, Red Hook Rotary sponsors is we have a, a club in our high school called the Interact Club, which is they do community service on a local and international basis. Um, and they're with us tonight as our servers. And I'd also like to they're probably in, in the kitchen cleaning up at the Renner's Creative Celebrations for uh, catering the, the food tonight. I'd like to thank them for that too. And we also have, we have past recipients with us tonight that I would like to recognize. Um, from 2005, Reverend Fred Cartier, our videographer. From 2013, Ruth O.J. 2014, Doug Strawinski. 2015, Sue Crane. 2016, Lori Houston. Thank you, and I'd like to thank all the businesses that uh, sponsored. They're in the in the center page of our uh, booklet. Um, please note who they are and and uh, support them in every way that you can. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Beth Jones up to say a few words. I have uh, been in this town for 14 years, and I think it's the best move I ever made other than marrying my lovely wife, Susan, the insane one. And, um, and um, uh, about uh, roughly 10 years ago, or nine or 10 years ago, I uh, met the closes, and uh, I just didn't even know what to think of them. Um, so I've been involved with the Friends of Elmendorf, so saving the building and preserving the building and keeping it going and getting it open to the public and having wonderful events there. I had my 60th birthday party there, which was an amazing event. So feel free to think about us for your uh, upcoming events. We'd love to have you uh, rent the inn and use it. It's a wonderful space for parties. But the closes were um, amazing people. I sort of felt like, you know, I don't know, just sort of like the universe provides and these amazing people show up back in Red Hook, and uh, Claudine for the first time, I think, which, although she'd been back and forth for years, just really bringing on their whole life, life experience and um, bringing it to us in Red Hook and then really getting what the community is. I just love this community and I talk about it all the time and I just think it's a great place to be and live and build, you know, grow your family and go to school and just live here. And um, I'm looking forward to being retired here in Red Hook and, you know, a little ways in the future, but, the, the, these folks uh, came and just opened their heart and their soul to what, what they saw a need and they stepped into it. And um, personally, I was thrilled because I wasn't quite in the position where I could just throw myself 100% into the community, but do it in bits and, you know, bits and pieces. And um, we both had, uh, were like-minded in that we saw the um, concern for losing the Egbert Benson Historical Society. But... You know, it, 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 you know, it has great, great archives and a lot of work has been done over the years, but we were really um, about to lose them and we thought it was a great thing to incorporate them with the Friends of Elmendorf. And um, while we worked hard to save the building and raise a lot of money to make that happen, um, you know, that's a building, so it's a great space. But then there's the archives and there's the history of Red Hook that really needed to be merged together into one organization to have it be bolder and bigger and better than anything we'd had before. So 
I really thank you for doing that. And um, I'm just left with their heart and soul and what they put into making that happen. And I really appreciate it. And I appreciate people who are retired and have a little more time. <laughs> But it's made a huge difference in our community, and I feel like we've like really taken something that was very special and really you know exploded it into this new project that we're working on, which you'll all hear about at some point. And um, I just thank you for your heart and soul and your grace. Claudine is the most gracious person in the world, and I'd be in the background going, "You gotta ask him this. You gotta ask him that." You know, because I'm like kind of do that. And um, she's very gracious, like very calm and like, okay, we're going to do it this way. I'm like, okay, great. Just get it done, you know. <laughs> so it's really great to work with you. It's, um, it's wonderful to have partners in crime that are up to the same thing and will make it happen no matter what. And, you know, Chris, he puts on that crazy costume and pretends he's Egbert Benson or, no, I don't know, somebody, somebody, whoever he is, somebody, else, Cornelius Selmendorf, I don't know. But, you know, he takes on new personas every once in a while and we don't know what to do with that. But he's very funny and, um, he keeps us going, and I uh, really appreciate your heart and soul, and thank you so much for bringing it to fruition, and we love you, and thank you for being here. Thank you, Beth. And now, what everybody's been waiting for, Nick. Nick Close is going to make a special presentation for us. All right. Thank you all for coming uh, tonight, obviously, to celebrate my aunt and uncle. Um, my name is Nick Close. I um, have had the uh, wonderful pleasure of being able to sporadically cohabitate Echo Valley Farm with Chris from Claudine over the last 10 years as uh, my wife and I built a house up at the farm. Um, and I was really touched and honored to be given the opportunity to uh, roast Christopher and Claudine. Um, so <clears throat> without any further ado, get rid of some of this stuff. Christopher and Close, uh, the Rotary Citizens, I don't know how this works. Is this what, is it on? Uh, the Rotary Citizens of the Year. Um, when I started thinking about the roast, um, when they asked me, um, I thought about their history, my, which is part of my history as well, being here from Red Hook, um, the collaborative efforts, and whether this prestigious award would turn this quiet country couple into a power couple. <laughs> the only problem was that I didn't know what a power couple was. So being a kid with computers, I Googled it. And I came up with this, a noun. A couple consisting of two people who are each influential or successful in their own right. So I was like, oh well, that's a good start but I need some context. So I found some iconic power couples to compare and contrast. First one maybe you'll recognize. Bonnie and Clyde. Now Bonnie fell in love with Clyde and she saw it because she saw it an exciting, uh, the, the thrill and excitement of a life of crime, and together they travel the country robbing and killing and living off the lamb. Christopher and Claudine, <laughs> I don't know, compare and contrast. Claudine was wooed by a wine store reforming hip hippie. And she chose the exciting, adventurous life as a wife of a mustachioed PR man and is now quite literally living on the lamb. <laughs> the next power couple I was thinking of 
is something that is very iconic. <laughs> Yoko Ono and John Lennon. Yoko was a talented artist and a filmmaker and a peace activist. She's the wife of one of the most famous musicians of the world in the world. Claudine is also a talented artist and a calligrapher and a historian. And she married a PR man who is famous for his bullshit. <laughs> you can't think of power without thinking of royal family in some form or another and from a compare and contrast standpoint I think that, uh, that this one proves out to be true. Camilla is a refined and patient wife. She's involved in numerous charitable organizations where Prince Charles is a pompous <laughs> bloviator that is passionate about rural planning and organic farming and climate change. <laughs> Claudine is a very patient wife. She's the president of the Historical Society and the Friends of Elmendorf. Christopher is a terrific bloviator. And to go along with climate change, he is personally responsible for the global warming effects of his continuous methane production <laughs> and is a member of the Zoning Enforcement Board where he is plotting to this is his grand plan I've heard everybody alluding to it and from the truth you're all recognizing on something, and this is the plot, because I've grown up with this. He's looking to turn Red Hook back into the Courier and Ives world. So don't be fooled. Because I have proof. Here's some more of his zoning goals, historically. He's clearly traveled back in time to figure out ways to bring himself back to some of the iconic storefronts of our beautiful little town. I couldn't resist, I mean. Both both Hillary and, and Claudine are both accomplished leaders during their AARP years. <laughs> and they both have left the men intelligently on the sidelines, allowing them to cheer for them. Now, the closest moved here in 1943 when my grandfather Woody and my grandmother Virginia bought the farm at Echo Valley Road and named it Echo Valley Farm. And they were a pretty powerful couple themselves in that they, they had a local, they, they performed a radio show called Red Hook 3-1 that was based right out of the uh, kitchen and they cut the records in one of the back rooms and it got broadcast all the way across the country. And it was local color and local flavor, and they would love this event. Woody, my grandfather, was a soft-spoken and artistic and creative man with a golden-throated radio voice and quite the personality. And Virginia, my grandmother, Christopher's mother, was an accomplished author, a radio personality, and an outspoken matriarch.
Now, Claudine is soft-spoken and artistic and nurturing and an indulging grandmother. Christopher is blah, 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 blah. I detected a theme. Power couple, what do you think? I think the compare and contrast is important. So I'm going to pause here for a second. So, yeah, power couple. So now we need to review, just to kind of, we've had our compare and contrast. So Claudine is an accomplished museum curator who loves a relic. <laughs> and she clearly loves to dress them up. I just realized this is out of focus here. There's lots of costuming at the farm. We'll just leave it at that. She likes to dress them up so that she can parade them around and put them on display. Well, Christopher is. I'm, I, I'm not sure. Christopher, Christopher is um, a very accomplished gardener and farmer. He's also a substantial methane producer. And apparently he's John Bolton's doppelganger. And he is a slick, mustachioed wine salesman with an eye for the ladies. <laughs> Fortunately for me and for everybody, he really stepped in it. And as my grandmother would say, he married outside of his class. And of course, Christopher is a treasured antique. <laughs> yes, I think they are a power couple. They are both influential and successful in their own right. Do they match up with the definition? I'll leave it to you to decide.
Just on a just on an aside. I, I would yeah, we gotta stand up. The bald I'm a little disappointed in my bald cap, but um, yeah. I can I can honestly assure you that this is um this is the most work Christopher's ever done with that pitchfork. <laughs> uh, just as an aside, as a, as a lifelong resident of Red Hook, you know, growing up here, graduated from high school here, and now I have a home, a house back on the farm. The last 10 years have been a very powerful experience for me. Um, I lost my father, um, and shortly thereafter, Christopher and Claudine moved up permanently and my wife and I were able to build a farm, uh, build a house on the farm together. And I couldn't imagine being in Red Hook, it was hard enough coming back on a you know, weekend kind of thing. I couldn't imagine being in Red Hook without you guys. Um, and it gives, it gives a connection to me, to Red Hook still, and, it, and the connection and the impact that you've had on this community is, is very heartfelt and very honest and very true. You heard it here tonight. And clearly, everybody who spoke has picked up on things that I've known my whole life, that these are two of the most caring and loving and passionate people that you'll ever meet when it comes to family and it comes to community, it comes to just life in general. And you've also picked up on the fact that, and that's why I chose the, the direction that I went with my, with my roast here, is that Claudine is the stability and we always used to think she was so quiet and so... No, it's, it's not like that. Trust me. Um, she lets him out every once in a while, and he does, and he does good. So anyway, um, thank you so much for, for making all this happen and, and for all you do for the community. And, and God bless you, and I love you. for words. I came out, I came out somewhat of a loss for words. But I can't tell you what it's like to be here now and to have grown up here. But I'll just share with you what happened today to me. And this is a story about, this is, a, this is the real life here. The rainbows of Red Hook. There were five in the sky today. As I walked out of paying my last respects to Jerry Griffin, who died last Saturday at 91, shy one week of his 92nd birthday, who with his five brothers, five of his eight brothers, served in World War II. There will be a piece in the Northern Duchess News, we hope, the Wednesday before Armistice Day, which is Sunday, November 11th. We hope it gets there. But I just want to say that as I came out, the sun broke through. The, there it was. I'd hugged Marge Griffin, Jerry's wife of 68, 68 years. I knew Marge Griffin when I was this high because she was Rocky Williams' secretary. For those of you who don't know, that's when the school was the school. 917 places. No room for any more because you didn't need any more in the future. That was in 1939. So I came out today, the sun was shining, I made this connection because I interviewed Jerry in April for this piece that is going to appear in the paper and will be in the Dutchess County Historical Society yearbook for this year about the six brothers from Tivoli who made it through the war. How many of you here remember the Red Hook drugstore when it was Danny Griffin's? 
and Jim Mars. Of course you do. But none of us knew when we went in and asked Danny, whom you only knew from here up. <laughs> and Jim, too. You knew him as a quiet, friendly, smiling, wonderful person. I learned from his brother that he'd been stitched by five machine gun bullets in 1944 in the Battle of the Bulge and had come home and spent a year in a Massachusetts hospital. You would never know that. That's the greatest generation. But I submit, from my experience of being with all of you tonight and for my entire life, though I was not here for a long time, that this is the rainbow, the end of the rainbow. And I can't tell you what a treasure you all are, that we all are together. I look out and I see people I've known my entire life, and I am moved beyond belief by all of you. Thank you for the community, and thank God for Red Hook. Thank you. This is such a, such a huge honor for us, especially for me, because I'm a newcomer. It's only been nine years that I've lived here, not even 10. But for all those 35 years, I loved coming to visit the farm, but I really had no clue what it would be like to live in a small town. I've always lived in cities. And little did I know that I was going to land in just about the sweetest community I've ever known. It's just this, I'm in awe of this town. The, 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 the kindness, the friendliness, the, the volunteer ethic is just amazing. And uh, I just only, I was going to say all these things about how you get to know a community by learning its history, which is what I've done. But I'm just going to say that I hope that I can give back to this community what it has given me, because it's given me a sense of place, and I feel like this is my place now, and, and you're my people, and I'm just thrilled to be here. So thank you, and thanks to the Rotary. Well, we, we thank you for accepting our uh, nomination to be our honorees tonight. And on behalf of the Red, Red Hook Rotary Foundation and the Rotary Club, I'd like to present you with this plaque. gift for you. Um, unfortunately, um, last year's recipient, uh, for those of you who are here, was uh, Brenda Cagle. And uh, Brenda uh, did something that uh, she felt she should do as the, the recipient last year of the Rotary Citizen of the Year. So she made up a t-shirt. She made up a t-shirt and she presented this t-shirt to every everybody, uh, past recipients who were here last year, and she had a couple extra, and she said to pass them along to our other recipients in the, in the future years. So, I have one for each of you. Thank you very much. I love t-shirts. That's great. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you very much. This is Oh, this is on, okay. Um, so a couple of um, last announcements. The one other program I, I forgot to mention, it was brought to my attention during some of the, the talks, is another thing Rotary has been doing since 1985. We took on the challenge to eliminate polio in the world, and we're getting very close to it. We're having a kind of a little tough time meeting that goal, but 
Um, tomorrow is World Polio Day, and uh, there is a little piece in the, in the program, and there are some posters out on the table uh, about our, our uh, goal to, to eliminate polio in the world. And uh, we've uh, partnered with, actually they came to us, Bill and Melinda Gates, uh, came to us with their foundation. They liked the work that Rotary was doing for polio. And uh, they <clears throat> have put out a challenge. If, if Rotary mat raises $300 million, they'll match it $2 for every dollar we raise. So that should help us get over the edge of, of eliminating polio. And before I conclude, okay. Thank, thank you, everyone. Um, Thank you for coming tonight to honor the closes and to support the Rotary. Um, and again, those people for pictures, please come to the front. Have everybody else have a, or everyone have a safe trip home. <laughs>